Have, are you aware of anybody who's helped, for example, locating Saddam Hussein after he was found in his underground shelter back in you know 2003, or Osama bin Laden, or any anybody of that nature? Henrik, would you be very kind? I don't know if you wrote it down or you memorized it, but would you be very kind to repeat what Scott John said? Um, which which find it in your notes? Which Vikram asks him. Yeah, yeah, about if the. This is still going on. Right. Do you it, remember it, what Scott John said? Sure, sure. He said that it's it's gone black, and and he, he said that his his logic to, well, the question was this. Why would the military or anybody who has an advantage when it comes to uh, you know finding people or, or tracking things remotely or whatever, why would they shut down a program of that immense magnitude and 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 uh, you know prospect? And of course, his answer was that you know I can't answer that, but I think your logic is powerful. Of course, they wouldn't. It would have gone black, and and that's where we that's where it left off, you know. And that's and that's my answer to you for this question that you just asked me. Okay. Now, yeah, there's so, uh, it's. Do you <sighs> let me put it this way? Um, wouldn't any intelligence agency of a big country, say Germany, America, England, Russia, Israel, uh, Japan, China, wouldn't they go for people who have certain abilities? power of the mind or psychics or intuitives or remote theories, of course they would. The work of an intelligence agency is to look for everything, anytime, everywhere. They don't care how the information is manifested as long as they get the right information. And that's exactly what happened after the 11th of September, the tragic attack in New York. America if you remember my words, needed information, and they needed information fast. So every big intelligence agency around the world probably has, a, a, they have an arm. Uh, they have their, they call it in, in different names, but that arm employs people, individuals who are intuitives, who do all kinds of mind power missions for them. Now, I thought it was interesting as well that, I mean, I think the international relations, a lot of the things that we see on the, on the TV at the, at the end of the day are kind of, from my point of view, theatrics, actually. There is a, always, always a much more deeper, interesting story going on behind the scenes. Uh, what, what's told in the media is very much on a need-to-know basis for, for the people who are involved in that. But I, I got interested, and my interest got piqued after 9-11 was brought up in the documentary as well, as it was kind of a, a, a suggestion that a lot of remote viewers and other people overall with psychic abilities were activated after this point. But as a psychic, you have to know that there was something wrong with the official 9-11 story, right? Well, um, I don't, Henry, really buy into the conspiracy theorists. Uh, if you're alluding or you're kind of uh, telling me that, oh, someone else did it, is that what you mean, or what do you mean? There, tell, tell me in words. Certainly, there, there are certainly a lot of uh, different theories out there, but, but my point is that if one begins to examine the official you know, commission story, you pretty quick realize that there's something that's not quite right. Now, I'm not saying what, that What I'm, is it, Enric? I'm asking you now a very clear question. What is not right? Tell it to me in words. For example, the 15 of the 19 hijackers on 9-11 uh, have been found alive. This was reported by the BBC. Building 7 went down um, you know, before and was reported by the BBC as well. Before so so what, are you, what are you concluding here? That who... Who is responsible for for that attack? I'm not saying that you might believe that. But <laughs> what are you telling me? Well, like, no, that's and that's my question. See, I'm trying to wrap it in that kind of context. That I don't know that. I just know that something is very fishy with certain data that we've been no. given about the well, story. Well, that that it's rubbish. They they, they were they, they were terrorist radicals who wanted to kill Americans, and they flew the planes into the World Trade Center. Full stop. That's exactly what happened. And, and uh, yeah, I do follow sometimes uh, the theory, you know, hunters and uh, conspiracy theories uh, from the Bush stuff. And I, I see it. I see it. But it's it's nonsense. This is very clear cut. 
clean and, and was understood very, very quickly. Uh, the, where they went wrong, the certain intelligent agencies, and believe me, we are, or certain individuals were warning of an imminent attack, uh, but there was not enough technology available, or, or they were listening to other dirty talk, to other uh, noise that was going on at that time on computers and telephones, and they missed this focal point of catching uh, these murderers. So that was, uh, you know, a big mistake, tragic thing, and it happened. But so my answer is, I don't believe all the uh, these uh, stories that uh, some other people are responsible for that attack. You know, you mentioned international intrigues and so on. Uh, one, again, one of my other missions was uh, a very positive one to influence the Russians to sign the Nuclear Arms Reduction Treaty. And uh, it was arranged by Senator Clayburn Pell, uh, who was then the head of the American Foreign Relations Committee, who sent Ambassador Max Kempelman, who was actually was, who was a very important and influential figure in Washington. He actually got the President's star, I think, by either Clinton or Reagan. Um, Max flew into London to brief me. And I knew that no one will ever believe that this is happening, so I had some my brother-in-law photograph us meeting secretly. And um, the task was to fly to Geneva with them. And I, I, Al Gore was there with me too. And my task was to simply bombard Yuli Voronsov's mind, who was the head of the Russian nego negotiator, to sign their nuclear arms reduction treaty. So I managed to get behind Yuli Voronsov and get really close to his head. I was maybe four or five inches away. And I started psychically, telepathically, bombarding his mind, sign, 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 sign. And um, this is in the documentary. And they actually signed. And of course, I can't totally sit here and claim and tell you that it happened totally because of me. But there's no doubt that I was influential telepathically in convincing him to sign the nuclear treaty. Do you have to be close to the target? This could not be done yes. remotely? OK. Do you know why no, that, do you I, know why I, that I is? Do, I do. I've been asked and still being asked to do to influence certain individuals remotely. But that's much more difficult. Um, I don't know really why. Maybe the psychological angle. Maybe uh, my whatever is leaving my mind, call it vibration, call it frequency, call it wave, call it telepathy. I don't know where it is. But maybe by being close to my target, um, that, that, that target receives the instructions uh, much clearer and faster than me being, say, 3,000 miles away from them. Well, I think it's very interesting because it shows as well what the intelligence services are willing to do, at, at what lengths they're willing to go to be able to influence. I think that that works on multiple, multiple different levels. Do you know if there has been other people like yourselves uh, that have been part of, of some of these type of pro or objects or, or operations as well, Yuri? Oh, I do know, but it's of course it's, it's they're doing it. Do you know why? Because it's cheap. It's not, it's not, you know, uh, satellites. It doesn't entail bringing, you know, that today the intelligence world uses so many different tools uh, from satellites to, gosh, to little things that, I won't go there now, but all this costs money, you know, billions, billions, uh, not tens, hundreds of billions of dollars are pumped into espionage. And when you have people who are intuitives, all you have to do is get them a room, get them a set of computers, and tell them go to work. So to fly me to Geneva, what's a big deal? I don't charge for this. Uh, I do it out of I my ideological belief systems and reasons and, and love for my country. Uh, I remember when they took me to brief in some top intelligence agents and uh, military officials, they used, uh, they, they asked me to do my lecture in a shielded room in the Capitol building. M most people don't really know that the top of the Capitol building, the rotunda, is a shielded room. 
that is uh, built there to create a room where it's against eavesdropping by the Russian embassy that is around the corner in Washington. Right. So um, those are expensive things that you build things and, and you know, to create the right intelligence gathering, it's expensive. So that is my answer, why intuitives and remote viewers are used by so many different countries, because they're relatively inexpensive to activate and work. Right, right. So you, you don't get paid to do these tasks? I would never ask for money for any of these tasks. So you come on. <laughs> so, Yuri, does your... Uh, I guess strongest allegiance lay with uh, Israel ultimately. Of course, I'm an Israeli, and um, and I I love the, my, our allies. Uh, you know, they help us, and we help them. We are extraordinarily advanced in many different arenas and areas, and uh, you know, <laughs> than many other countries. And believe me that if we weren't, there would be suicide bombers blowing themselves up almost, almost weekly in Israel. But we, are, we know how to stop them. And that's the problem in the world today, the, suicidal, uh, the suicide bombers, because they're radicalized and uh, you know, they, they believe in the cause and they, they will kill themselves in order to kill others. That's our problem. And I'm all bringing it down. I mean, just look at yesterday, Boko Haram, uh, which is a terrorist organization in Nigeria, killed, I think, 50 children. They just broke into a school and murdered them and, you know, cut them down. They, it's shocking. What I'm trying to tell you here is probably the final thing that we'll probably end up this interview with. Look, we are worried all intelligence services are in many, many different countries are worried about one thing today. It's nuclear explosion. We are concerned that uh, these radicalized terrorists are not stupid anymore. Some of them go to Yale, Oxford, Cambridge, Stanford University, Penn State, University of Munich, University in China, in Beijing, in Shanghai, etc., etc. They're groomed. They're being prepared for something big. There are scientists who work for terrorist organizations, scientists who know about nuclear weapons. We are worried that a nuclear weapon, and we're, I'm putting aside Iran now, we are worried that a nuclear weapon will be devised and built and managed to be placed into a suitcase an attaché case, and just use your imagination, such a bomb exploding downtown Washington or LA, or Milan or Rome or London or Paris, or anywhere in Tokyo, you're talking about an immediate death toll of 100 to 300,000 people, and then an area of radiation that you won't be able to control for years to come. That is what we are concerned about now, and that's what we have to stop. And those of you out there who are very much into your show, Henrik, who are against the National Security Agency, uh, and you are, let's say, with Edward Snowden and all that, that is wrong. We've got to know what's going on. We've got to have information in order to stop major attacks, <laughs> tragedies, way beyond the World Trade Center. Now, do you do you then? No, I, I hesitate to say think that this will happen. Uh, again, I just want to use it from your point of view in terms of psychic ability. Have you uh, seen anything of this nature happening? Look, why don't you ask? Why don't you ask this almost like an open question, an, like an open letter that everyone can hear and everyone can answer? You so, show me. Stop. Uh, by the way, Henrik, where are you based now? Where are you out of? I'm out of, I'm I'm out of Sweden. But where? Which city I meant? I'm close to Gothenburg in okay. Sweden. J just go out to the street and ask 20 people in Gothenburg, in the streets of Gothenburg in Sweden, that question. I guarantee you that most of them will say, yeah, yeah, it's probably going to happen someday. 
almost every American will, will say that. Nobody is going to say no, because science is so advanced. Nuclear is so advanced today. Look what's happening in many different laboratories around the world. I mean, it's on the internet, for goodness sake. You can build bombs by going to certain websites and learn how to build them. So we are, you know, in an age, day and age, that is scary and dangerous. There's, of course, a lot more we could ask you. Let me maybe just end on this note before we wrap things up here for this time. Um, there are some pretty bold claims on this program by some guests that we've interviewed about, you know, UFOs and aliens and time travelers and all kinds of stuff, you know. And I wanted to ask you in your work in the past, did you ever, and you don't have to say what it is, but did you ever encounter anything exotic, shall we say, that you did for, for any agency or even a private contractor to, to locate something or find someone or find a, a, a base somewhere here or elsewhere even? Anything of that nature, Ori, that you did that you could just say yes to, that you did something like that? Um, well, my answer to that is no. I, I, only, I have only done very kind of down-to-earth uh, logical and rational targets that I was given uh, in, the, in the military, you know, in the intelligence arena. But where everything you just mentioned, I believe in. There's no doubt in my mind that there are time travelers, no doubt in my mind that UFOs exist, no doubt in my mind that we are being visited. The, absolutely. That is my, in my belief system, and that is a green light. No, I know that that those that phenomenon does exist. Well, very, very interesting. I think geopolitically we've uh, learned some interesting aspects today as well, and, and people can, of course, uh, connect the dots for some of the things that you said, uh, Yuri, and I, I recommend everyone to, of course, look at the documentary as well that we uh, talked about because there's some very interesting uh, people in there and things mentioned in there. But, uh, yeah, let's wrap things up for this time with you giving up some of the details again, uh, Uri, about your okay, website. I my website address is origeller.com, in which you will find the DDC documentary, The Secret Life of Ori Geller, and another documentary that is called Ori Geller, A Life Stranger Than Fiction. Please order the book from Amazon. It's called The, Life, the Secret Life of Ori Geller. It's written by a brilliant journalist who writes for The Guardian in England and for The Financial Times, and it was actually Time Magazine's European correspondent. I think the book will amaze you. I answer every email I get. Just be patient. And uh, I love you all. Thanks for your patience. I hope I didn't rumble on. Uh, if I did, I apologize. And uh, a big hug to all of you. And, Henrik, thanks very, very much for inviting me onto your show. Very good. Thank you for your time, Ori, and for coming on. We do appreciate your time. Have a good day. Interesting regarding 9-11, isn't it? A reaction every time that it uh, comes up. Nope, can't look there. Anyway, I think you can piece together some of the points discussed in this program and uh, make it relevant in the bigger picture that we are outlining in general on this program.